Programmet presenteras av Betsy.com. Hi and welcome back to MMA Nathan Studio MMA, and we're here with Marshall. Zale- can I pronounce that right? Uh, Zelaznik. Give it a shot. Zelaznik. That's fine. That was good. Yeah, and let's fine. see if I can get your title right as well. Director of International Development. Yeah, well done. That was that good. W- that works. All right. What exactly does your title stand for? What is your job? Well, I have the um, the obligation, if you will, on behalf of the company, to find uh, opportunities in the international market outside of the U.S. and Canada. Uh, for not only television, but other businesses that the UFC gets involved with. So generally, uh, with the team that we have primarily in the UK, now we have a group in Las Vegas, we have an office in Beijing, uh, we're out there as a team looking for opportunities to expand the UFC brand. Now, mentioning the the, the UFC brand and where they came from, where they come to, what type of of industries and and businesses does, does that include and what type of partnerships are you looking for? Well, the UFC, um, some people look at it in its simplest form as a fight promotion company, but I think in its broader form, it's a media company. Uh, We not only hold live events where we're putting on, obviously, these fights where we sell tickets to, but we generate programming, much like what you are doing here. You know, we generate content that we deliver around the world for television. We have a merchandise business. We have uh, a digital delivery uh, business when it comes to our applications and widgets and things like that. Uh, We've got uh, partnerships with uh, gaming companies in our licensing business and things like that. So uh, the UFC is a a very sophisticated media company and and has uh, tentacles in a lot of different businesses. Now, coming into to a country such as Sweden, um, talk to us a little bit about how that how it starts from the first initial contact with the country and how you go from there to to what we see behind us is going to happen on, on, on a Saturday night. Yeah, it's um it's actually pretty organic. You know, I think what ends up happening is we do a television deal generally is the first step into a market. And from that, we see how the television ratings go. And, and for Sweden specifically, about five years ago, uh, almost six years ago, when we launched our office in London, uh, we saw Sweden pop up on the radar and it surprised us. One, there was interest from many media companies for the rights. And at the time we were on gym television, I think it was. Um, and our web traffic, I mean, Sweden at that time was probably the number four country for web traffic for us, um, which was, it got our attention pretty quickly. Uh, and we then started to do a little more digging around. We knew the Swedish MMA Federation was here developing. Uh, we knew that there were fighters training here. Joe Silva would, you know, call me, you know, we'd have these calls and he would say, Hey, there are a lot of fighters, you know, in, um, Sweden, we ought to keep an eye on. And as you start checking the boxes to what makes us bring an event like this is we look for a good television partner. We look for good web traffic. We have a merchandise business that's developing here. We know there's fighting going on here and that there are, there are quality, uh, fighters. Obviously Alexander Gustafsson, um, has really made an impact in the sport. And so, even though we started this process probably four years ago to bring the event here, um, I feel like this event would have been successful four years ago. It's um, right. So now this is a culmination of a lot of hard work in working with the Swedish MMA Federation, uh, with the group out of the London office that's uh, been focused on the market. Uh, that's what's allowed us to have the success that you see. And we spoke a little bit earlier about the... Uh the naysayers, so to speak. Obviously, Sweden being a country of with uh, with one of six countries in the world where professional boxing was banned for a very long time. There's a lot of people that were against it. How do you how do you face such competition and 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 how do you, how do you win them over to your side? Well, you know, I, I used to say there was a time. I remember when we launched in London. There was a, um, a British Medical Association had come out with some um, opinions um, about mixed martial arts uh, they at least consistently didn't like boxing they didn't like ice hockey they didn't like probably cheerleading if you ask them because of the injuries <laughs> that people get so there was some consistency and so um, but I think when someone takes the opportunity to really look into the sport and I remember debating with this uh, person from the British Medical Association was that if you kind of just close your mouth and open your ears and open your eyes and you see what's happening um, this is just a mix of martial arts that are taking place in the Olympics, if you will, right. between boxing, wrestling, judo, um, taekwondo, all of these sort of um, movements, if you will, are part of what makes the sport. And for whatever reason, people sort of lose perspective as soon as they get mixed together. 
Um, and so what we've been able to do, and if we can find the right-minded people, even people that come out against it, generally if they're open-minded and they're willing to listen to the facts and actually talk to some of the fighters, you know, the fighters are the best uh, representatives of what this is about. These are passionate guys who are expressing the art that they love, and uh, they happen to be martial artists. They happen to be guys who compete. There's nothing violent about this sport. There's no malice, ill will, intent that goes on, and so... What, what we do as a company and what all of the offices around that are in this international business, and we still do it to a certain extent in the U.S., is we take the time to meet with media uh, representatives, whether it's the press or media officials, television executives, and then going into the political offices and getting people to understand. And I think that's what's allowed the sport to grow around the world, is that the willingness of people to at least open their mind to it um, and at least be educated about it. And, and I think it goes... Like you like you mentioned, the, the fighters themselves, but also the people behind the scenes. I think one of the biggest fears in Sweden, so to speak, is the stigma of fighting and it's all being criminals and the people behind it are crooks. Um, I know you're a family man. I am a family man. Um, I think my son would be shocked if, if he thought that people perceived this as that kind of thing. Um, I, I know that the stigma that comes with boxing and... Um, I've been a boxing fan since I was a kid in the days of Muhammad Ali, and um, I've watched boxing. I still watch boxing, and I know some of the black eyes that boxing has taken over the time for things like that. Uh, mixed martial arts and certainly the UFC and the way we promote it, uh, we are an, a, a company that uh, answers the tough questions. We want to have these meetings. We don't hide behind the shadows. Um, we're out in the forefront of trying to create a new sport for the world, a new world sport, and um, we're having a lot of success. And and I think it's because of our openness. I mean, everyone from Dana White down, um, and when you think about what Lorenzo uh, Fertitta represents, you know, there's an honesty and integrity in this company that people like Mark Ratner, uh, who are associated with it, when you get when you take the time to realize who's behind this company, you realize whatever you believe about combat sports and boxing, they just don't relate to what mixed martial arts in the UFC is. How did yourself get involved with the UFC, and, and up until the point of uh so to work for the UFC, how involved were you in mixed martial arts and what was your first encounter with mixed martial arts and your personal opinion as well? Well, for that matter? I, um, well I got involved with the UFC because I used to work for a television group in New York uh, that licensed the UFC. So I got to know Dana and Lorenzo that way. But my first introduction to the UFC, like a lot of people, was a friend bringing a VHS tape at the time over to <laughs> me. Too. I'm sure of it. Exactly. And watching Hoist Gracie and our minds were blown that this guy was doing what he was doing because at the time when it was more of a spectacle and there were no weight classes and this 185 pound guy or whatever he weighed at the time was just wreaking havoc. We used to call him the Python. I mean, it was amazing what he did. <laughs> and so we were all blown away by it. But it took... Uh, my time at in demand at this television group to really start to appreciate the sport because when you look at it on the surface you see two guys in the middle of a fenced ring who are kicking and kneeing and throwing and choking and you start to think what is really happening here and I've always been a sports fan and I was drawn to that but drawn to it for more of the sort of baseline of what the sport was that same baseline that a lot that turns off some people but if those people do what I did, which is learn more about the sport, you start to see that there are so many layers to what this sport is. Yeah. And as any sports fan, whether you're a soccer or a football fan, uh, it's those nuances of the sport that keep you interested. If it was so one-dimensional, you'd be bored with it. But you know, everyone calls this three-dimensional chess, and I think that's really what it is. And if you take the time to learn about it, um, and you like contact sports, and you like competition, um, I was drawn to it for those reasons. And um, uh, And I've... You know, my son, who's now 10, he's, I remember when he was four and he went to his first event in Manchester and he was hypnotized by what was happening and people were shocked. Well, how can you bring your son there? But he knows now that, um, and he knew then that this is proper sport, proper rules, proper regulation. And when we would play fight at home, he would say to me, dad, is it WWE or UFC? And what he was telling me was, were there going to be rules or not? And because right. it was WWE, he was going to jump off the couch. He was going to throw a pillow at me. <laughs> but if it was UFC, he knew exactly what he was doing. And, and that's what drew me to the sport, is that it's proper sport. Great. Marshall, thank you very much for coming into the studio. We're looking forward to the event on Saturday. And I'm sure you are as well. Yes. Are you nervous at all? No, never nervous. This is a bit like a wedding sometimes, I always say. You know, there's a lot of drama and issues that go in getting these behind the scenes, getting it all organized. But the vows are going to be exchanged and there's going to be a big party. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going right, to take thanks. a quick break. Oh, my God.
programmet presenteras av Betsy.com.